Hello and welcome to Matters of Faith. I'm Christiana Bakker. An Arab proverb says, people are enemies of what they don't know. The best way to know and understand one another is to come together to talk and exchange ideas. Dialogue is our subject today, especially between the Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. Of course, they're sister religions that have so much in common. Most importantly, they share the same inherent values and virtues such as goodness, forgiveness, respect for others, peace and justice. But many people don't know this and propagate the notion of otherness and incompatibility, even a clash of civilizations. Today we'll explore the dynamics and the challenges of dialogue in Europe. With me in the studio is Jürgen Miksch, a theologian and a sociologist who started out as a child actor. Welcome to Matters of Faith. Now, you have written many books and articles on the subjects and you are very active uh, in multicultural and multi-religious dialogue. What do you do? Well, just now I'm retired reverend. Uh -huh. uh, I'm very happy to be a father of an 11 year old daughter. Very nice. So on morning time, I go to my office, uh -huh. uh, the Intercultural Council in uh, Darmstadt in Germany. And in the afternoon, I'm at home. I play with my daughter, make uh -huh. homeworks, oh, how nice. uh, and I'm happy to be a father. Yeah, wonderful. The best thing. And what do you do in terms of your intercultural, inter interreligious dialogue activities? Well, um, the Intercultural Council in Germany, uh, I uh, was founder of this uh, institution, mm -hmm. is a place of, of dialogue. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a lot of different programs, uh, programs uh, who, who deal with uh, the situation of uh, differences in religions, between ethnic uh, groups and also uh, dialogue with uh, politicians, uh, with um, people of different social uh, classes. It's quite a lot uh, what, what we do. Um, also w uh, when we fight for uh, in election campaigns, for example, uh, for the election right and voting right for foreigners. Uh, so do they I have any rights, foreigners, to vote in Germany? Um, well, it's uh, very differentiated, mm -hmm. but uh, the main problem is that uh, foreigners who don't belong to the European uh, community, mm -hmm. to the European Union, they have no uh, voting rights. And so we say uh, foreigners who live in Germany and who are here for more than five uh, years should all have uh, voting rights on the communal uh, level. Uh, if uh, in villages there are elections, it is important that they have the right to vote because many of the subjects that are important for people uh, occur uh, in, in villages. Yeah, in local elections. Local. What about in main, um, you know, national elections? Well, when I live in London as a German and I don't have the right to vote until I, you know, become a British citizen. And in fact, I applied for my documents now, perhaps to, you know, register as a British citizen because I would like to vote as well. So I, as a German, I don't have a right to vote in the national elections until I become a British citizen. And I can yes. keep both um, nationalities. What is it, is it like? What is the situation for foreigners in Germany? Can they be get a German um, citizenship? so that of they can have the right to vote? Or of course, the same situation as in uh, Britain. Uh, you have to become a German citizen, I think that is also correct, to have uh, the right to vote on the national level. Yes. But that is different from the local level. Is it difficult to get a German citizenship though? Well, the government is very much interested that uh, foreigners become German citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, but the law situation is very difficult, so it's um, not too easy. You have to make uh, some tests, for example, and uh, you have to speak German, as that's correct. Can um, they keep um, dual nationality? Uh, well, um, it is uh, officially not well accepted, uh, but uh, in reality, 52% of the persons who become German citizens uh, have uh, uh, two nationalities, I or some, some of them uh, more nationalities. Yeah. And I personally and I, uh, Intercultural Council, are very much in favor to have uh, more uh, nationalities. That's uh, important and positive yes. in a global world. 
And we have just started uh, in, in these weeks a campaign uh, for uh, dual uh, nationalities. Very good. I'm pleased to hear that. Yeah, so, and what do you do in, um, you know, with your interreligious um, activities, your dialogue? Well, with it, you coined the term Abrahamic Europe, I heard. What's this all about? Well, um, in the Intercultural Council, we have different uh, working groups uh, uh, which work on this subject of uh, interreligious uh, dialogue. Let me say first, we had for a long time a so called interreligious working group with responsible persons of the uh, Jewish Central Committee, of the working group of the Christians in Germany, of uh, the Muslim Central Council, of the Buddhist Union in Germany, of the Baha'i and uh, Alevites and others. Uh, we stopped Muslim? this. Muslims? And Muslims, of course, uh -huh. yes. The Central so Council of uh, Muslims was uh, part of that. Uh -huh. So you worked together with all of them? Uh, yes, it was a working group uh, in which we worked with all of them. Mm -hmm. We finished that uh, and transferred it to a so-called round table in Germany, uh, where all religions work together. Okay. And then we uh, worked uh, more intensive for the Abrahamic Council. Mm -hmm. And in the Abrahamic Council, uh, or Ab Abrahamic Forum in Germany, uh, we have uh, persons of the Jewish uh, Central uh, Committee of the Working Group of Christian Churches, that's the Federal Republic uh, Working Group of all the Christian Churches, of the Central Council uh, of the Muslims in Germany, and other Muslim groups, DITIB and so on. And after some years, uh, we had also the Baha'i with us. We had a long discussion about that. And uh, in the meantime, also the Baha'i belong to this Abrahamic Forum because that are all religions who refer to Abraham. Oh. And then we have uh, the so-called German Islam Forum that is a place where people of the society um, of different backgrounds, religious persons, uh, scientists, uh, people of the government, uh, come together with different uh, p persons of different groups of uh, Muslims uh, in Germany. And this so-called uh, German Islam Forum has also uh, Islam fora in the uh, Länder, in, in, in the region, countries, in the countries, yeah, yes, yeah. and uh, now also in uh, the communal level. Okay. But the, for me, most important thing is the Abrahamic cooperation, yes. because that's uh, especially difficult. And yes, what did you mean by Abrahamic Europe when you coined this term? Well, uh, in our history, we uh, said always that uh, Europe West is a Christian West. Mm. Uh, but uh, now things have changed, but not only now, also in the history, Europe was always very much influenced by the Jewish tradition. Jewish? Yes, yes. by the Jewish uh, tradition and by the Muslim uh, uh, yes. tradition. You see, yes. we have in Europe countries who ha have the majority of people who are uh, Muslim. For example, Kosovo, Albania, or uh, Turkey, of course. Yes. And we have now, in the European Union, more than 15 million Muslims. Mm -hmm. And in all over Europe, we have more than 50 million Muslims. And that uh, means that uh, we have to understand Europe uh, in a new way, not as a Christian West, not as a Christian Europe, but as an Abrahamic Europe. That means if you speak uh, in religious terms from Europe, you have to see that is not, uh, Europe is not only Christian, it is also Ju Jewish, it's Christian, Muslim, Baha'i, and uh, in Europe there are also other religions. That's so interesting um, you say that uh, because, of course, there's a great discussion also about Turkey entering the European Union. Uh, many other countries <coughs> from the Balkans have already entered, um, but there's a big discussion of whether Turkey can enter. B one of the reasons, perhaps, may be that Turkey is a Muslim country. What is your view on this? Well, uh, we worked in the Intercultural Council special on this uh, subject, and we were very much in favor uh, to have Turkey as a member of the European uh, Union. Uh, one of the points is for us that we have to understand Europe as an Abrahamic Europe, and mm -hmm. that means that also the Muslim groups 
belong to Europe. So the argumentation uh, a Muslim country like uh, Turkey is, shouldn't be a part of uh, Europe is not an argumentation uh, uh, that uh, can be uh, supported. Because of Abrahamic, the Abrahamic tradition? Yes, because we, uh, we are traditionally in Europe, uh, an Abrahamic Europe, with uh, the Muslim and with the Jewish tradition. After all, uh, you mean, for example, uh, for Andal Andalusia, Al-Andalus was uh, Muslim for so many hundreds of years. Of course, but uh, and, and you have uh, Muslims, for example, in the Scandinavian countries. People don't know this yes. uh, usually. Yes. We have now four million uh, Muslims in, in Germany. Yes. And we have to recognize this changes things. Well, for Germany, that's a new experience. Yes. Uh, but uh, I think we uh, can help these Muslims living in Germany uh, if Turkey becomes a member of the European uh, Union. How else could uh, you know, Europe benefit from Turkey becoming a member of the European Union, do you think? Well, uh, especially the European Union because uh, we open uh, to the, uh, all the countries to which uh, Turkey has good relations. Turkey has traditionally relations uh, to Muslim uh, countries in, in the Far East, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in Syria, in mm -hmm. Iraq. And uh, I personally would say, well, if you look to Abrahamic Europe, mm -hmm. you will see that traditionally all the countries around the uh, Middle Sea, yeah, Mediterranean. The Mid Mediterranean uh -huh. o uh, Ocean. Yes. Uh, they were traditionally, for example, in the Roman Empire, uh, belonging to the Roman em Empire. Mm. And I personally would say we should think about it uh, that Europe is also enlarging not only to the east, to Turkey, yeah. but also to the south. Yeah. Because uh, these Mediterranean uh, countries yes. have many relations traditionally to Europe. And I think maybe in 10 or 20 years, uh, um, Europe will have to think if it shouldn't uh, enlarge also uh, with uh, th these countries who are... Which countries? Uh, are you Egypt, for example, oh, Morocco. All right. You see, they were traditionally uh, mm -hmm. uh, countries with close relations to Europe. Yes. And uh, this um, was changed to some extent uh, through the religious differences. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in long term, I think it is important for Europe to be, uh, become uh, more open and uh, uh, I personally could also think that, for example, Palestine and Israel yes. should become a part of this Europe. Well, that's just a dream. That's a very uh, great, uh, great uh, vision. But, but uh, yes. in this vision, I think that this could be also a possibility to solve the uh, terrible conflicts between yeah. Israel and Palestine. If they would be a member in the bigger uh, uh, European Europe. context, yes. I think many of the problems they have could be solved. But, well, that's a vision, that's a dream. Now, we are going to take a short break and we shall continue our very interesting talk on interreligious and multi-faith dialogue in Europe right after this. See you then. <laughs>